process. Um, so I failed to introduce myself. My name is Janet Forrest. I'm the head, head of adult programs here at the Nantucket Athenaeum. And I'm so excited to have Robin um, Putnam back for another virtual workshop. So I will pass it right over to Robin. I'm gonna spotlight her for everyone to see. Wonderful, thank you so much for being here and for taking the time. It's always, I, I was mentioning earlier, I'm sort of tired of Zoom, but it is really nice to be able to connect with you guys without having to drive to the Cape and get on the ferry and figuring out costs and all of that. Um, so as mentioned, my name is Robin Putnam. I work for the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation. Um, we are a state agency. We're located in downtown Boston, right across, excuse me, right across the street from Trinity Church. Um, although obviously like everybody else, um, we are working hybrid. So today I was working from home. Um, I will be in the office tomorrow. Um, I did put up some information into the chat box. So we have a consumer hotline that is run Monday through Friday from 9 to 4.30. It is not automated. You will actually talk to a human being. Um, the phone number is 617-973-8787. Um, our consumer specialists are very well trained and they take between three and 500 calls every week. Um, if you don't want to talk to us, <clears throat> that's perfectly fine. You can actually send us an email. It's consumer at mass.gov. Um, and we also have a very thorough website, mass.gov forward slash consumer. Um, any kind of information you're looking for, you want to hire a contractor, you want to look up a license. If you bought a car that turns out to be a lemon, um, we have all of that information online. Um, and we have other small, shorter versions of this presentation online, along with a few other different topics. Um, so thanks, Janet, for also putting up the information as well. Um, so part of my job, besides many other things, is to do community outreach and to get in front of consumers across the Commonwealth and get them information so that they can be, they can make better uh, decisions in their lives. For example, Hiring a licensed in individual to come into your home. Um, if you're not sure if you're the new plumber in town has his license, his, him or her, you can go to our website and you can actually look that person up and find out if the license is indeed in good standing. Um, and one of the other ish things that I handle actually is the state data breach reporting. So when there's a data breach and it's happened and it affects one consumer in Massachusetts, the entity actually has to report it to our office as well as the attorney general's office. Um, and I'm the one who actually <laughs> reads through all of the data breaches and makes sure um, there's no missing information. Um, some of the other programs that our office runs, we have the home improvement contractor registration. So if you hire a contractor and the project is over $1,000, it's your own personal in the home, not a vacation home, that contractor actually has to be registered through our office. It's, it's a law. Um, we have an arbitration program, we have a complaint program, um, and we also have a guarantee fund that's all wrapped up into the uh, home improvement contracting. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do run the state lemon laws. If you buy a car and, it, and the bill of sale is in Massachusetts and it turns out to be a lemon, please let us know, give us a call immediately. Um, Massachusetts has some of the strongest lemon laws in the general New England area. If, if you say decide to buy a car through say CarMax and it's coming from another state, not a problem. Make sure the bill of sale is in Massachusetts. So if there's any kind of problem, we can help you out. Um, so those are a little few things about our office. We also do have, I'm sorry, underneath us, we have five regulatory agencies. We have the division of banks insurance, professional licensure, telecommunications and cable, and standards. So I like to say we pretty much touch anything that a consumer may need, whether it's your cable bill, uh, your insurance, uh, a new licensed individual, all that. We have all of that information on our website. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit about identity theft and fraud prevention because unfortunately it's, it's quite prevalent and it has really imploded since this pandemic. Um, I believe the numbers are about 500% that fraud has jumped. And I will say 
the data breaches that I have received, um, we would get maybe 15 or 20 a week prior to the pandemic. We're getting upwards of 75 to 100 a week. So there's a lot going on um, and it's a little frustrating to deal with sometimes, but I think having an open conversation in, in a venue like this is very helpful. Um, fraud tends to have a little bit of a taboo. People don't wanna talk about it. They don't want, they don't want to know, they don't want anybody to know that they may have fallen for something, um, clicked on a link, etc. So I think it's a good thing to actually have conversations about um, and be open about it. So before I kind of dive in, does anybody have specific questions or topics you want to make sure I cover? Um, you don't have to wait till the end. If you have a question, you feel free to um, bring it up when it, as we're talking. Okay. So I usually start off with com the conversations regarding phones because it's the one thing that drives us all completely insane. Um, I have two phones, one for work and one for home. And the important thing to know about phones is you really can't trust your caller ID at all because there are apps that you can download, put on your smart device so that when you call somebody, it might pop up on the caller ID as my office the IRS, uh, the federal government, the White House, um, the local police department. Um, so if you get a call and you don't recognize the number or it pops up the IRS or the police department, I wouldn't pick it up because every time, every single time we pick up those phone calls, the fraudster makes money because they now know it's a working phone and someone picks it up. So if you don't recognize the number, don't pick it up. Now, I'm not knocking the fire department or the police department, but unless you know someone who works specifically there, there's really probably no reason for them to be giving you a call. Um, if it does pop up, let it go to voicemail. Um, and when you listen to the voicemail, look at what they're asking you. Are they asking you, hey, you know, we're updating our systems and we need some information from you? Probably fraud fraudulent. Um, that's the one thing about the phones is there's a lot of social engineering that's been going on quite a bit prior, you know, years ago, you might get a call that would say, you've won a million dollars, just click here or call us back at this number. But the fraudsters realize that we're not idiots and we won't fall for that. But if they find little pieces of information about who we are, whether it's online, um, news articles, etc., they might glean enough information to use against you. So what social engineering will do is, let's say you threw out an ATM receipt. Now, alone, the ATM receipt's not gonna do much damage, but sometimes there are the last four digits of your ATM card. So if someone gets a hold of that, they now know, oh, it's Sarah Smith. And those are the last four digits of her ATM. She's also a customer of whatever bank. They can use, what they do is they will call you, and using social engineering, they'll say, hi, this is Sarah. I'm calling from your bank. Uh, we noticed some discrepancies in your accounts. Were you at Best Buy last night trying to buy a $3,000 TV? And you might be like, no, 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 that wasn't me. Well, we didn't think so. We didn't allow the charge to go through. Could you verify that the last four digits of your ATM card are, and they'll read it off. Could you verify that the last four digits of your social security number are, and they'll read it off. And can you verify that you still live at 151 Main Street in Nantucket, Massachusetts, and your mother's maiden name is this, and you have six grandchildren? All of that, those little pieces can be found out about us. So if you receive a phone call like that, I honestly would just simply hang up. I would never give any personal information out over the phone to someone who has called me. I would only do it when I have called, made that initial call. Because, as I mentioned earlier, you can't verify who really is calling. Um, so it's just very important to know that. And it's gotten a little bit dicier because in the last couple of months, there have been a lot of hospitals across the country and here in Massachusetts as well that have been hit with ransomware. So a hospital might not necessarily have your social security number, but they have a lot of other information. So what's been going on, it's actually going on right now in Western Mass. It hasn't quite made it here into Eastern Mass. People are getting calls and the callers are, uh, 
identifying themselves as, I'm a new uh, receptionist at Dr. So-and-so's office. I'm just updating some information. Could you verify that you still live at this address? You were last seen by the doctor on this date for this, and he put you on a prescription for this. Um, can you also verify some more information? So it's it may not be here, but it will definitely come. So I just think with the phones, just be very wary of what kind of information you're giving out uh, because, because there is so much craziness going on. Um, and I think during this pandemic, it really imploded uh, the text messaging fraud um, because, well, let's, let's be honest, we're tired, we're cranky. We've all been home for far too long and we've ordered way too much stuff online. And uh, I will say, I noticed the, the uh, Amazon truck always in my neighborhood. So the fraudsters have kind of jumped on that and they have started sending uh, fraudulent text messages. So this is Amazon, could you click here? Um, we have a package for you, but we just want to verify your address. Seemingly innocuous, no problem. It's just Amazon. They're not asking for personal information. They're just saying, oh, well, we, have, we have a package for you. I wouldn't click on any link that you are sent because these fraudsters are, they're impersonating the UPS, FedEx, uh, the local police, excuse me, the local post office and Amazon and all of that. So I just would be very wary. Um, what's interesting is it's the, the demographic that is in their 20s and early 30s, they are falling for that text scam. But those of us who are over 50 or 55 or 60, we're not falling for them. So I think it's kind of it's interesting to see who falls for what. Um, so I think with the phone, just be wary of picking up the phone. Look at look at who's calling or who seems to be calling, um, and be and just really don't click on any of the links that someone may be texting you. Um, if it if it comes up, it's your friend who's saying, "Hey, can you click on this something or other? Give that person a call first, just to verify. Oh, it really is Sarah Smith, and she's sending me a." something or other um and those links i do translate into emails the phishing emails they are they can be very good or they can be crappy and you can figure it out immediately um again with emails just don't click on anything that you're unsure of um and again because of social engineering these fraudsters are are very intelligent people they can mimic banks they can send you an email that might say customer service at b of a dot com now just look at look at the email sender is the email address spelled correctly um are the registered trademark colors of your bank in that email um, and i'll use bank of america just as an example because i am a customer their trademarked colors are red white and blue um, whenever i receive an email which is very few and far between it's usually customer service spelled correctly at b of a dot com. Now I have received many fraudulent uh, phishing emails where customer service is not spelled correctly or it might be italicized or as instead of b of a dot com it says at gmail dot uk. I know they would never use gmail and they don't use they're not located in the United Kingdom. But if the email address looks like it could possibly be correct, look at the body of the actual email. What are they asking you to do? Anytime I have received an email from any of my financial institutions, it's always Dear Miss Putnam, Dear Robin Putnam. They identify me specifically, not Dear Loyal Customer. Um, but look at what they're asking you. Um, look at the grammar. A lot of times these fraudsters are not, uh, English is not their first language. So the spelling can be off, the grammar could be off, what they're asking you doesn't seem to make sense. Um, if they're asking you to click on something, oh, could you click here and update your social security number for us? You can't update your social security number. It's never going to change. So it's just be very, I think it's the thing about fraud regarding phones and or uh, phishing emails, just take that extra moment and think, Does this is this legit? Does it sound legitimate? Um, do I think my friend is in Paris and needs me to wire her $10,000 because she lost her passport? 
those are common emails that will people will send and say because they'll they'll figure out that your best friend you know or your neighbor who who that person is and they'll impersonate that person and they'll send emails they'll infiltrate that other person's email inbox um it's just you have to be very careful because it's electronic and the thing about a, a, the electronic frauds is that once you click on something on a smart device it inevitably will put um malicious way, uh, spyware into your 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 device so that's what you really want to make sure you don't do um does anybody have any questions everybody's very quiet <laughs> eating your dinner uh, robin sure yes hi um so does it solve all the issues if you just say um sorry i can't call talk now can i call you back or i mean how is that something you would just tell us to do and would that solve the problem no and no okay i wouldn't, I wouldn't pick up the phone at all okay but if you have picked it up um, have, yeah i would just say hang up mm -hmm. and be aware because because now that they know it's a working number they're going to keep calling okay okay so yeah okay. um what was I, where was I going with this? Um, phones and uh, passwords, passwords. Now, whenever I talk about passwords, I either get a nasty look from people or people look down or away. They don't wanna look, they don't wanna talk about passwords because we are very lazy people. We don't like to change our passwords or if we change our passwords once a year, we recycle last year's password or we have one password for everything. Um, I am not a password fanatic, but I actually downloaded a smart app on my phone um, and that keeps track of all of my passwords. Um, you have to create passwords that are creative, long, and have nothing to do with who you are as a person. They can't be a favorite color, your high school yearbook name or your high school name, your any of anything like that, you know, choose, black sweater with polka dots, one, two, three, something, or a song lyric, or a lyric to your favorite poem. Um, and really, we need to be changing our passwords every four months. And we have to make them strong because that's, that's another issue. If you get an email from your friend who lives down the street, and you know that it's her actual email address, but she's asking you something a little wonky, a little that doesn't make sense, my guess is her email address, her email account got hacked. Um, and the same thing goes with social media. Like for example, Facebook have to have to change those passwords um, because what happens usually with, with Facebook hacks is the same kind of thing with emails. They will start messaging everybody in you, all of your friends, or they might even do something you know horrible and post horrible things. But passwords are going to keep us all a lot safer if we just change them, we make them different. If you don't want to do an electronic password keeper, completely fine. My mom who's 78, she just, she has a notebook, she keeps it hidden away. And when she needs to change her passwords, she pulls it all out again. Um, whatever's going to make life easier for you, that's fine with me. Um, you just have to be aware, you know, when things come up, you just have to be aware of maybe it's time to change my password. Um, I will also say, if you are not a technology crazy person, my mother, my mother's so techie, it's fabulous, but I'm not have a have a techie person in your life. Um, whether it's the geek squad, or I go to if I ever have a problem, I will honestly, <laughs> I will simply go to the Apple store with my laptop. Um, because I know I'm going to the professional who knows what my Apple product should be doing if I've done something that I shouldn't. Um, and I inevitably will feel a little foolish because it's usually some 16 year old kid and in three clicks has figured out the problem and solved it. But I know I feel more comfortable going to the professional who knows how to fix the problem. Um, so when you are, when you, when your smart device tells you, hey, you haven't done an update in, <coughs> 30 days, 90 days, you really need to be doing those security updates. Um, 
if you're unsure, again, try to get someone in your life who is technology savvy. Um, I think if you, being Nantucket, all you have to do is say, go to the Better Business Bureau, type in Nantucket or the zip code and look for a, a technology kind of company, like a, like a geek squad or something like that. There has to be a, a reputable company that can be helpful. Um, a lot of times these fraudsters are looking for smart devices that haven't been upgraded. They haven't been updated. They, you know, since for over a year. So they're looking for those secret little back doors um, to get into your system. So it's, it's really important to get that, to make sure you're updated with that. Uh, if you can, do try to, do, to use, excuse me, two-factor authentication. Um, for example, whether or not it's, you know, recognizing your face or your phone, uh, putting your thumb and or a password. Um, all of my, all of my uh, electronics have two-factor authentication. Um, sometimes it's a little frustrating and irritating, but I just know that doing that will make it that much more challenging for someone who shouldn't be looking at my information. What else can I talk with everybody about? What kind of questions do you have? What questions do you have? Um, Actually, Robin, I have a question. This is Jenna. Um, do you recommend, like I use Facebook on my laptop and my um, work computer. I don't log out just for convenience. Do you recommend logging out every single time? If it's your personal laptop, I don't have an issue, but I, I try to log out if I have to look when I'm at work. Because honestly, what if someone gets into the Athenaeum and starts rummaging through your information. I just think that any device that's going to be left at work should be locked out, logged out, excuse me. Yeah. But then again, but the thing is, if you're gonna keep it logged in on your, say your phone, that's where the two-factor authentication is gonna come in. So someone, if someone got my phone, unless they have my thumbprint or know my four digit code to get in, they're not gonna get into it, but you know, that way, if I'm still going to leave my um, account open, it's not really, in my opinion, it's really not going to be very difficult. I mean, it's not, it's not problematic. Um, I leave my, I have all my passwords on my phone, um, on that, the note thing. Okay. Is that, is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't, I don't think that's the smartest thing. If someone got a hold of your phone. Right. Is, can you lock your notes? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you should, I think you can. I think, I I think you possibly can. I, you might want to look into that. Mm -hmm. I just, if you can't lock your notes, I wouldn't leave them in there. Yeah. You just, yeah. Um, a, a question did come in regarding Facebook um, and or any, any site really um, tracking you. So be aware anytime you do uh, a Google search, uh, anytime you're doing a search in any of the social medias, any accounts, they are going to track you. Absolutely. They're going to track you. And let's just say you're looking at vacation rentals in Nantucket, Massachusetts. Well, obviously you live in Nantucket, so maybe whatever city. They're, the next time you go back online, they're, they're going to send you more vacation rental items from different towns, and they're gonna to try to keep t sending you more and more information. Um, so just be aware that you, that's happening. Um, you can clear your cookies on your devices so that the tracking stops every every day when you clear it. Um, so I think whatever whatever you're going to put on social media, just just be make sure it's something that you want the entire planet to know. Because once you put something out there, you can't get it back. Um, but regarding the, the tracking, yeah, a lot of a lot of um, reputable companies. <laughs> want to track you so that let's just say you're always shopping at L.L. Bean 
Now, this is just an example. If you are, say, in downtown Boston and you walk by an L.L. Bean store, they're going to know it. They're going to know it because they, they've seen you on your phone constantly looking at L.L. Bean. So if you're walking by one of their stores, you might get a text message or an email that pops up. Hey, we, we noticed you're in Boston. We have some great sales going on at L.L. Bean right around the corner. Um, so it's not necessarily they're not. It's, it's not a bad thing. They're just doing it for marketing so they can get you to come in. Um, but just be aware, yeah, there, there is a possibility that they are tracking pretty much everything else. Um, try not to put personal information on Facebook. Don't put your full date. Don't try not to post pictures of your vacation until you come home, unless you have a house sitter, um, because there have been people who will see who in the neighborhood has gone on vacation and as soon as you walk out the door they're going to try to rob you so you've just got to be very careful about what kind of information you're putting out there on on social media the entire planet doesn't need to know that you're leaving for six weeks tomorrow morning at 6 a.m post those pictures later um how to clear tracking you mentioned on iphone ipad ipad da, 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 da. so uh, I was actually commenting on clearing your cookies. That would clear where, what you have looked at online on your smart device. I've only done it once or twice, so I'd actually have to look it back, look it up again. Um, so whatever device you have, whether it's a PC, um, like I'm using a ThinkPad, what you can do is do a Google search, um, clear cookies for ThinkPad, clear cookies for iPhone, clear cookies for whatever device you have. Um, I just haven't done it in a while. Um, I don't really, it doesn't matter to me. I don't really look at anything crazy. Um, so it does, I don't really, it doesn't bother me. Um, passwords on Apple are protected by your code and face. Doesn't Facebook have suit against them about insider trading and cannot they use Facebook into a dig deeper? Um, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Elizabeth, do you want to just bring it up? Um, is there a lawsuit right now against Facebook? Oh, Facebook against, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about a, a lawsuit suit, excuse me, regarding Facebook and Apple. I, I mean, think, I have to look it up. I think, can I talk to you just a second? Okay, yeah. I think that you addressed part of this when you addressed the photographs and not putting vacation photos because they, I just learned this last weekend, they have access to tons more than I even assumed they ever did. Um, the social media sites. Mm -hmm. It, it frightened me and <laughs> yes um i think it's was it facebook that has all of our pictures like everyone in the planet who's on facebook which is probably 98 percent of the planet yes um i'm not a, i'm not clear regarding lawsuits but i mean i'd have to look yeah. into it. but be, yes they have it it's not necessarily <laughs> facebook the thing is i can do some digging digging um, let's just say, so I, when I graduated from college or my senior year in college, that's when the internet came crashing in. Um, so I always thought, oh, well, no one's going to know my high school mascot because I was in high school prior to, um, the internet and maybe I could use my high school mascot as my password. So no one would know it. The problem is when people pass away, they often donate books to libraries just to clear out the home. So lots of libraries around the country have been given um, old yearbooks and they are scanned online. Mm -hmm. So I could go online and I actually found my high school yearbook online. So I can go in and find little pieces of information of how, who I am. I can go onto um, an ancestral website and go and find, okay, who was her great grandmother? What town in Northern Ireland did she grow up in? how many children, grandchildren. So all of that, those little pieces of information can be found out about us, even if you're not online. 
So when I mentioned passwords, make sure they're not, they're not connected to who you are as a person. It can't be your favorite grandchild. It can't be a favorite color. Your grandmother's maiden name. All of those, it has to be something completely set apart from you. Um, when should scam emails, phone calls, or texts be reported all the time? Federal Trade Commission, um, .gov, um, I'll put it in here. They do track all of that. So they, the more we report this information, the, the crazy calls, the emails, um, all of that should go to the Federal Trade Commission, excuse me, Commission. Now, if you get an email say that it's your banking institution and or your or your credit card, you might want to consider contacting your financial institution and asking them if they would like to see those emails. So, like there, so they might say, "Could you just forward the the crazy emails to our fraud department so we can look into it as well?" Um, everything should be reported, and I know that not everybody wants to do that. But it doesn't really take much time. The Federal Trade Commission, FTC.gov, um, can take you about five five minutes. Um, you send just a copy of the email that you got. So it depends. Um, you don't have to send the full email. Let's just say you got a if you got a fraudulent email, I would send them. You can cut and paste. Um, you can just send them the fraudulent email address that came in uh, regarding phones. You can say, give them the phone number, the time of day. You don't have to give them your information at all, but you, if you give them, the more you, information we give them, it does help them track these people down. Um, the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, about two years ago started running a new program with, with uh, them. And basically what it is, is it, verifies caller A before it gets to you, caller B. So if it's already, that number that's coming in, if it's already been detected as fraudulent, it will pop up onto your, your smartphone as either fraudulent or spam, possible scam, things like that. So they are working on the phone scams and they're cutting down a little bit. Um, but yes, I think the more times we report, the better off we're going to be. It just, it helps them find these crazy people. Do you post, um, this is helpful to kind of get a run through of what kinds of scams are going on. And um, I mean, it seems to me like I'm always hearing about, well, something's good. There's a flurry of the same kind of scam going on. Do you like post that on your website so that we could go on and go, oh, you know, what kind of scams are going on right now? And let, yep. let's. So what we do quite a bit. So. Our consumer, we meet with our consumer specialists um, every Friday morning, and they give us the lowdown as to what they've been hearing. People commenting or calling saying, I just keep about one specific scam, or maybe it's two or three. As soon as we have information like that, we'll either put a blog post out, we'll put it right on our Facebook page, we'll put it on the front page of our, of the, our website. Um, we also have a newsletter so that once a month, we'll put together the newsletter saying this is the number one fraudulent call or email that we've seen and heard about um, and other consumer issues that we're trying to get information to. So it's, um, we do try to put all of that immediately out as soon as we hear about it. Right. right. Um, and you were saying that the, I, I can't remember what you, that people in their twenties and thirties kind of millennial type of folks, um, are falling for different kinds of six sure. than us than older people. And I'm wondering if, but aren't, I've he always heard that older people are being targeted for, for this kind of thing. Um, so it depends. I don't, it used to be, I think that the older generation, yes, was kind of targeted because they have a little bit more money than the 20 somethings, but the 20 somethings are still, they're still getting hit. So if you think about it, if you know a millennial, I know, I know a few, they're always on their phone and they're never paying attention to anything and they don't think twice. So they get a text message from their bank. They think it's their bank. Could you click here and update your um, social security number? We're trying to update our files. They don't think twice and they do it. 
Now, wow. the that young person has not received, um, they haven't given their social security number. Well, sorry, they haven't lost any money. But what they don't realize is that their social security number is now in the hands of somebody else. And that, in a, in a sense, is much more challenging. Because if you think about it, once I get a hold of someone's social security number, I have a higher rate of trying to open up bank accounts, get a job, get a passport, get a license, rent a car, rent an apartment. Um, so the kids necessarily don't, the, the, the financial loss isn't quite as impacted by say someone who's over the 65. Um, but seniors, I think, yes, depending on type of, you know, different types of times of year, yes, there will be, seniors do get hit with, hey, Nana, it's me. Um, I got put in jail and don't tell mom, um, but I need some help getting out or something like that. Um, I think, in my opinion, because I've spoken to a lot of senior groups, a lot of our seniors are much savvier than we give them credit for. They, they, don't, they will push back and they'll ask good questions. And they are a little bit, they're more skeptical, I think, sometimes. But obviously, there's going to be someone who thinks they've you know, won $10,000 through a Facebook lottery, which they don't have. But I think the more we talk about the different types of frauds that we're hearing about, um, different towns get hit with different things. So that you are going to be more educated so that if you sit down and have lunch with someone tomorrow and, and this person says, hey, oh my gosh, I think I won this lottery from Ireland and I'm kind of excited. It's only a thousand dollars, but isn't this awesome? And you'll be able to say, no, you can't win a lottery in a foreign country. You, unless you hold that passport, you can't win, live that, excuse me, you can't win that lottery. Or, you know, I got this call and it sounded like a great deal and maybe I should do this. Um, the more we talk about the crazy things you'll get on your phone or your via your, your email, um, the, the smarter you're going to be. Um, thank you, Janet, for putting our Facebook page up. <coughs> Excuse me. Are there any other call, questions? Um, is it worth it to, I mean, you talked about the, the textual advertising or whatever it's called when you do a search um, and you're always doing LL Bean or whatever. Um, is it worth it? I've heard that you can use another search engine besides Google mm -hmm. that don't track you. Um, like somebody was telling me about DuckDuckGo or sure. something like that. Yeah, it depends. Um, in my, okay, this is my opinion. I'm really not too concerned because I don't really, I don't do Google searches that would ever incriminate me for doing something crazy. Um, so if you don't want that to happen, sure, try DuckDuckGo. I haven't used it yet. But then again, I'm really, it doesn't bother me that I might get an ad for sweaters from L.L. Bean or Apple products because I was looking for a new something or other for my phone. Um, I just try to clear the decks at least once a month. I don't ever but do that. I think, I don't, I don't look at, I don't look at enough, I don't look at any crazy things online. So nothing that should ever get me into trouble. Um, do programs like LifeLock help? So yes, there are programs out there that you can download. They have apps um, that can be very, very helpful. Um, they can monitor your information for you and give you alerts. Um, there's a lot of them out there. Um, I use one and I love it because it just, it always sends me a little alert. Hey, we noticed, well, it's not always a great thing. We noticed some extra spending the other night um, on your Amazon account. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I did go, yeah, that was me. Um, but I, I think what I like for me for peace of mind is it's also monitoring the dark web. So it's monitoring it for my mother's maiden name, any of my old passwords. It's monitoring it for my social security number, any of my financial information, um, because I've already been involved in three different bat data breaches. So I do know that my information is out there. Um, so it's just 
I, I don't have an issue. I would just, whatever company you're thinking about using, just do a deep dive. Look at all of the information, all the reviews, whatever the costs are, um, and, and make that decision for yourself. It's just, if there's something out there that's gonna help keep you safer, why not? Um, I, I just think, I look at fraud as, a, as an iceberg. So you would think that the Titanic could never be taken down. So when they saw the iceberg, all they saw was that little teeny triangle. They didn't see everything else underneath it. And when, and that's really what the dark web is. That's all of the things, that, all of that could take you down basically. So I do, I, if, I, if there's a program out there that can monitor all of the nefarious, excuse me, the nefarious things going on in the dark web, that makes, that makes me feel a little more comfortable. And there are a lot of those programs. LifeLock was one of them. Yep. All you have to do is just, you could do a Google search um, and just see, see what would make sense for you. Mm -hmm. huh. I, just, I just would prefer to just, I'm that really crazy person who I see fraud so much every single day, just by even reading through the data breaches that come into my office. I mean, last week, Last week alone, there were three data breaches that came in that affected over 180,000 Massachusetts residents. That was just three different breaches in one week. So fraud has jumped and it's, it's just honestly don't think it's gonna get a heck of a lot better, but we're gonna be less likely to fall for something if we pay attention, if we look at, really look at that text message, really look at, you know, the email that comes through or the phone call that comes in and really think about it. I mean, unless you have grandchildren and they all went to UMass, why would the chief of police at the UMass Amherst Fire Police Department be calling you? For just an example, you know, you have to really take that step, take that moment to go, all right, hmm, I don't know. Will you speak to the safety of receiving paper banks and other financial statements in the mail. Um, so I, I'm very traditional in that I do like some of my bills to come in. Uh, I prefer all my utility bills to come in so I can just kind of, kind of keep track of those things. I don't have a problem with doing paper versus online. I just would say that if you're going to pay a bill physically and put a check in the mail, give it to the mail carrier directly and not leave it um, in a mailbox at the end of your uh, street or the end of your driveway with a little red flag up. Because there are people out there who will try to steal mail. Um, and once they have that uh, check that you've written, it has your um, bank account number and routing number. So once they have that, that can, they can cause some problems. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, if you're going to do online banking, choose, make sure that your bank has a, um, an app that is safe. So for example, if you ever shop online with Amazon and you use their, their downloadable app, it's encrypted. Um, I have Bank of America and their app is encrypted. So if I use free Wi-Fi around here and I, cause I need to check something, I know that I'm, I'm going to be safe. Um, but if you are used, I would never. I would never log into any of your accounts, let's just say at the library or the Athenaeum or using any free Wi-Fi because you just don't know who may be lurking around waiting or trying to find your information. I think any of your financials, do it at home when, with your own closed Wi-Fi or download the, the smart app for that financial institution. I think most financial institutions, excuse me, if not all, have them at this point. Um, because they don't want to deal with fraud either, and they want to keep you safer. Robin, this might be outside your wheelhouse, but um, something I've been thinking about lately is just not so much security, but privacy. And someone talked about DuckDuckGo. Something you might use DuckDuckGo for, I think, is if you're talking about anything personal or like medical conditions, 
only because our apps are listening. So there's times where I'm talking to like my best friend or my husband, and then I open Instagram and there's an ad for something that's like, wow, that's yeah. more than a coincidence. <laughs> it's gotten many people into trouble because they didn't realize Alexa was listening. Now I don't, oh, she just turned on. <laughs> Alexa, off. So yes, you have to be aware of any smart device that you have that could possibly be listening. Um, if you're going to have that personal conversation with somebody, do it in the other room. Just, just and just be aware that it possibly something might be listening. Wow. <laughs> well, my Alexa just turned on. I mean, I did a <laughs> I did a lecture like this, and I said that word too loudly and there were three people on the zoom of the i don't know 10 and their alexa's all turned on <laughs> i'm like oops sorry that was me yeah there's a mute button on the on that isn't there the red button that you can push down on the alexa yeah. on the alexa yeah yeah <laughs> so alexa is listening yeah oh sorry alexa just said sorry i didn't catch that but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she just doesn't listen well. No, she doesn't. <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> Here's what she wants to hear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions I can answer? Boy. So, uh, so you're saying with passwords, we shouldn't be using our pets' names and their date of birth? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. That's number one. Yeah. But no. But if you add like weird numbers and stuff on them, isn't that just the longer it is, the more challenging it's going to be for a fraudster to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I think with now, if you don't have a Facebook account and you don't have any family members with a Facebook account and you have a favorite dog, fine, go for it. Mm -hmm. But if you have friends or family that might possibly have a picture of Nana with her favorite dog, Fifi, on their pictures, um, on, on their pit posts. Wow. Be, just be aware. Um, yeah, no, no favorites of nothing because it's just, it has to be something. I mean, every once in a while, I will choose a piece of clothing that I'm wearing or bright sunny day, one, two, three, exclamation, or what have you. I try to make it different or yellow glasses. Mm. Someone says, I, I use LastPass to store my passwords and login information. Yep. I use, what do I use? I use, um, I don't remember what I use. I have to look. Huh. There's, there are a lot of them out there. Just choose, choose something that's going to make life easy for you, um, but also make you, help you feel safer. Huh. How come they just don't have this? Are there any other questions? Well, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, you have all of my credentials. You can, you know, easily call me, text me. Um, several times I've received call, calls when the caller ID has said a friend, a friend or a neighbor. Should I call that person afterwards? Has the name of a friend or neighbor. I don't, I mean, if it's, if it pops up your friend or neighbor, I don't have a problem with answering that. Well, let's say you answer it and it, it's a recording. It's obviously a scam. Uh, should, should I, what I, my question, it was my question. Uh, should I call that friend and alert them that they, that they've been yeah. scammed? It's, it may not that they've been actually scammed. No, whatever it is. Yeah. What I would say is yes, alert them so that if they do have a Facebook page, they can put something on their Facebook page saying, hey, um, if you got a recent call for me asking for something or other, please disregard it. Someone's spoofing my phone number. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And yeah, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you taking the time. And this was for anyone that chimed in late, um, this is being recorded. So I'll get this posted in the next day or so on our YouTube page. And if you've registered, what I'll do is I'll email you 
uh, Janet Forrest at antigodathenaeum.org. Look for that email um, spelled correctly. <laughs> um, and I'll send you the link to that YouTube page and you can watch this recording again or share it with others. Wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You're very Thanks welcome. Everyone. Thank you.